You can retire on Social Security, Chapter 4, what your Social Security benefit will be. In the previous chapters, we calculated how to find your AIME and then your PIA. That These are critically important, don't get me wrong, but neither will tell you what your actual benefit will be. This is because your benefit amount is based on your age in which you file for Social Security. As we sit here today in 2019, you can take your Social Security retirement benefit at any age between 62 and 70. I emphasize retirement because spousal and survivor benefits are different. The earlier you take your benefit, the less you receive on a per month basis. Remember, as we discussed last chapter, your benefit is based on your primary insurance amount, your PIA. Your PIA is the amount you get at your full retirement age, your FRA. If you were born in 1960 or later, your FRA is 67. If you were born in 1954, your FRA is 66. And born in 55, your FRA is 66 in two months. Born in 56, your FRA is 50, 66 in four months, etc. We got a table of your FRA right here. Once you know your FRA and your PIA, we can start crunching numbers. Let's say John was born in 1954 and has a PIA of 1,817. Jane was born in 1960 and has a PIA of 2,881. We know John's FRA is 66 and Jane's is 67. If John takes his benefit at the earliest age, again, that's 62 years old, his benefit will be reduced by 25% from his PIA. He'll receive 1,362.75 a month. If he waits until he is 70, his benefit will increase by 32% above his PIA to 2398.44. Let me put commas there. Be right back. Oops, or did that. All right. So here's table, let's see. Yeah, here's table seven. John born in 1954. His FRA is 66, which means he'll get 100% of his PIA, and his PIA is 1,817. So if he files at 66, his full retirement age, that will be the amount he gets at, at uh, 66. If he files at 62, he'll get 75% of his full his PIA. It'll be 1363. We're not. We're just rounding for the uh, the, the cents. If he files at 70, he'll get 32% uh, above the PIA. Will be 2398. So you can see 1368, uh, 1363, 1817, or 2400. Essentially, pretty big variance there. As you can see in table seven above, there's a wide range in benefit amounts, all contingent on what year John actually takes his benefit. Most people take their benefits early. Over a third, in fact, take their benefit at 62, meaning they have a huge permanent reduction in their monthly benefit. Roughly two thirds of recipients claim benefits before their FRA. Now allow me to sidetrack for a moment. I believe many Americans miscalculate their life expectancy. They think it is 78 years old. They figure if they are 62, there is a good chance to live only another 16 years, and so they might as well collect benefits early. The problem with this is that the life expectancy for an American born today is 78, but according to the Social Security Administration's own life expectancy calculator, a male who turns 62 today has a life expectancy as shown below. You're born in 1960. If you're turning 19, uh, turning 62 today, you have a life expectancy of 21.6 years. You're going to live until you're basically 84. You have, a, if you're born in, uh, if, if you're if you're 66 in six months today, you have an additional life expectancy of 18.4 years, which means you're going to live until you're 85. If you're turning 70 today, you have additional life expectancy of basically six more years, uh, 16 more years, so you live to your 86. A female has an even longer life expectancy. If she turns 62 today, a Social Security expects her to live more than 24 more years. If she turns 66 in six months today, Social Security would expect her to live almost 21 more years. If she turns 70 today, Social Security would expect her to live almost 18 more years. So you can see. If you are a man and planning on taking Social Security at 62 because you think your life expecting is 78, you're almost six years short of what Social Security thinks it is, which is what they base your payment on. If you're a woman, Social Security thinks you're going to be around into your late 80s. So think long and hard before you file at 62 and take a permanent reduction. Now let's turn our attention to Jane's benefit. Jane was born in 1960, so her FRA is 67. She also made the maximum benefit for Social Security. 
Table 10 below shows what her benefit will be depending on the year she files. Now here we got 67 is our FRA, all right? So that, John's was 66, but because Jane's older by uh, six years, she doesn't get her uh, PIA, her full benefit until she's 67. Now if she waits until 67, she'll get 2881. However, if she takes it earlier, she's gonna get a 30% reduction uh, as opposed to 25% and only get $2,017. And if she waits until she's 70, she's only gonna get a 24% bump, uh, but still go from 2881 to 3572. So you can see, again, as with John, there's a huge variance of the actual benefit Jane will receive depending on when she decides to file. File early, receive a bit more than 24K a year. And we're getting that by 2000 times 12 is 24, rocket science. File at FRA and get around 35 a year. 2881 times 12 is 35 a year. Rocket science. File at delayed at uh, 42. 35K a month is 42K a year. And I got my trusty calculator over there to confirm that for me, just in case. Using the Social Security life expectancy tables, we can calculate exactly how much the Social Security Administration expects to pay Jane. If she files at 62, she'll get 24K for 24 years. How do we get that? Because 62, she's going to get 2,000 a month, and Social Security expects her to live for how long? 24 years, all right? So we're just making this simple. It's 24.3, we're just saying 24. So in this case, uh, file at 62, she'll get 24K for 24 years. File at her FRA, she'll, she will get 35K a year for 21 years, and file at 70, she'll get 42K uh, for 18 years. Thus, in scenario one, she receives a total of $576,000 of total benefits, not adjusted for inflation. In scenario two, she'll receive 735,000, again, not adjusted for inflation. And in scenario three, she receives 756,000. As you can see, if she files at 62, she'll lose nearly $180,000 of benefits over the course of her life. It gets even worse when we factor inflation in the mix. Adjusting for inflation, which the Social Security Trustees Report predicts as 2.6 a year, her benefit amounts actually look like this. File at 62, she'll receive $837,000 adjusted for inflation. File at 67, her FRA, she'll receive $1.079 million adjusted for inflation. File at 70, she'll receive $1.272 million adjusted for inflation. Now we're talking real money. If she files early and lives to life expectancy for the, which, the year in which she files, so she files at 62, they expect her to live another, what was it, 24 years, uh, she'll be leaving $435,000 on the table adjusted for inflation. Hard to imagine two-thirds of the population would take reduced benefit if they truly understand how Social Security works. How did I get that? Well, let me show you. Here's your Social Security benefit depending on the age you file. All right, and so we see 24,204 is what we're saying when it's, uh, if you're 62 today and you haven't adjusted for inflation, because that's, well, let's just read this thing here. What table 11 shows is the annual inflation adjusted benefits Jane will receive over her life. Notice the bold amounts, 24 here at 62, 39 at 67, 52 at, 60, at 70. Uh, these are the inflation-adjusted amounts she'll receive when she files at 62, 67, and 70. Let me explain how this works. Let me explain how this works. When Jane turns 62, she looks at her Social Security statement. Table 10 shows us what her benefit will be depending on the year she files. All right, so the benefit will be, depending on the year she files, 2017 a month, which would be 24000 204 a year. All right, so we've got to look at that. We've got to look at that. Remember that. Uh, File at 62, her benefit uh, will be reduced from a PIA of 2881 to 2017. But if she waits until she's 67, uh, her benefit will be her PIA at 2881, but will also have grown with inflation for the five years in which she waited to file. So instead of her benefit being at 2881 a month, it will actually be 3257, assuming a 2.6% cost of living adjustment, which is an increase of 376 a month. Now, don't forget, if she took her benefit at 62 and initially received 2,017 a month, that benefit will also have grown, because of inflation, to $2,293, which is an increase of 276. And we'll just go back to this chart. So we'll see here. 
24,204 a month if she files this at uh, 24, that's 62. When she was at 62, if she waited till she was full retirement age, her benefit would be 34,572 a year. Fast forward until 67, her 24,204 a year grows to 2718, which is an increase of about $3,300. But her benefit at full retirement age grows from 34,572 to 39,302, which is more almost uh, it's almost $5,000 in a benefit improvement increase. All right, so that's how the difference it is. Um, the cost of living adjustments put an extra $100 a month in Jane's pocket uh, by waiting until FRA to file than it did if she filed at 62, even though it's the exact same percentage increase. This is due to the simple fact that 2%, 2.6% grows more in actual dollars on a larger amount than a smaller one. Let me actually make sure I got uh, my put a month there. Hold on just a second. In fact, if we look at the inflation adjustments, if Jane were to wait until she was 70, what was an actual benefit? What was an initial benefit of 35.72 a month will grow to 43.86 with inflation, which is an increase of $814 a month. Watch, I'm just this is freaking nuts, my friends. So she's 62. She has her social security statement in front of her. She's deciding when to take social security. She takes that 62, it's gonna be 24,000 a year. If she waits until full retirement age, it'll be 34,000 a year. If she waits until her delayed earnings credits, it'll be 43,000 a year. So she's like, hmm. But if we actually look at with inflation, we fast forward until 70. By the time she's 70 years old, if she would have taken it at 62, that would have grown to just under 30,000 a year, which is basically a $5,500 increase. If she took it at her full retirement age, that would have grown to 42,000 a year, which is a uh, $8,000 increase from what it was at 62. All right? Not at 62 when she took it, but when at 62 when she saw her statement was making a decision. Yeah, if she waited until she's 70, that 40, initial 43,000 a year would have grown to about 50, eh, a little bit less than 53,000 a year. $10,000 increase just because coal is. So basically, it's increasing by 5,500 at uh, from 62, increasing by about 8,000 at full retirement age, increased by about 10,000 uh, at 70. So it's just more and more uh, increased because the larger the benefit to begin with. This is incredible, man. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, as years go by, those inflation adjustments get larger and larger to the point that at age 86, Jane would receive 34,550 more in benefits in that year alone by having filed at 70 than if she had filed at 62. Now, this is, I mean, just look at this. So if we're 70 years old, we'll go back. So she's, let's, uh, what, what do you say, at 86. So 86. So here she's getting $44,815, and that's expecting her to life expectancy at 62. So when she's 86 years old, she'll be receiving $44,815 if she had filed at 62. If she had waited until she was 70 and survived until she's 80, 86, uh, if she had filed, wait, what did I say? Okay, so let me say that again. I'm not, I think I confused myself there. When she's 86 years old, if she had filed at 62, that was her life expectancy another 24 years. If she's 86 years old and she's still living, the amount that she initially got at 62, 24,204, would grow to 44,815 because of the 2.6% cost of living adjustments. Does that make sense? However, the amount when she was 62, if she looked at her statement and said, if you wait till you're 70, you'll get 42868 That would have grown to $79,365 a year, a year, if she survives until she's 86. It's just, it's insane. I mean, that's $34,000 more a year by have waiting until she's 70 years old. It's, I just, I cannot stress this enough. And I hope this book helps you figure this out because you're going to have the option I'm 62, here's my statement. I, I check out now, I get 2,000 a month. If I wait till I'm 65, I get whatever that is, 2,500 a month, something like that, uh, 2,800 a month. If I wait until I'm 70, I get roughly 4,500 a month. And then, but you're, that's just a comparison of apples to oranges. You gotta compare apples to apples with the cost of living adjustment. So if I wait until I'm 70, my cost of living adjustments will grow to $52,000 a year. Whereas my cost of living adjustment, if I took it at 62, it only grow to roughly 30,000. By the time I'm 86, my growth, having taken at 62, would have grown to 44,815. 
but my growth having taken at 70 would have grown to 80,000 bucks, just shy of $80,000. Oh, it's crazy. What table 11 shows us is the annual inflation adjusted benefits uh, Jane will receive over her life. Uh, we are talking about that. All right, so let's keep going down. All right. So here's what happens. Age when taking social security, diet life expectancy. So again, the life expectancy is based on if you're 62, 67 or 70. So if you're 62, you have a life expectancy of 24 more years. If you're 67, you have a life expectancy of 21 more years. If you're 70, you have a life expectancy of 18 more years. So if you survive to your life expectancy from these years, you'll make 837,000 uh, by taking that at, at uh, 62, but you'll make 1.2 million after taking at 70. If you die at 70, well, if you waited till you're 70 to take it, obviously you don't make any money. In that case, you only make $163,000 uh, if you had taken at four retirement age, whereas at least you would have made $240,000 if you took it at 62. If you die at 77, and that's basically the break even rate, uh, you're, uh, you would have been better off by waiting into your full retirement age. You would have made $493,000 at 67, uh, $472,000 at 77, uh, if you took it at 62, and uh, $461,000 if you took it at 70. So you can see here, if you die at 80, you're going to be in this. So basically, as long as you survive until you're 80, you're going to be better off taking that 70. And then if you factor, I mean, just, and we're talking significantly better off too. I mean, that's just huge. If you die at 90, I mean, that's $430,000 more uh, inflation adjustment. Table 12 shows us what Jane could expect from various filing scenarios, assuming a 2.6% cost of living adjustment. Now, as you can definitely, as you can see in table 12, if Jane expects to survive beyond 77, she should def definitely wait to take social security to at least her full retirement age. But most people don't calculate like this. They calculate their life expectancy again, as if it's 78 years old and don't even adjust for inflation, which means they calculate the benefits like this with no inflation adjustments. File at 62, they think they're gonna live until they're 78. So they'll get 24K a year for 14 years. They'll get 336,000. File at 66, they think they'll get 35K a year. For 12 years, they'll get 420,000. File at 70, they're gonna get 42K, but only for eight years, they'll take 336,000. Now it's just wrong, it's just wrong. I can't tell you how many times I've been challenged by people who don't understand how life expectancy works. They'll type in, what is the US life expectancy in Google and see this result? 78.69 years in 2016. And they'll say, oh, that's it. I've had this on the own, my own YouTube channel more times than I can repeat. The problem is they don't read the fine print. According to the latest available data, a baby born in 2016 and 16 in the U.S. can expect to live 78.6 years on average, more than seven years longer than a baby born in 1980. Emphasis mine. Thus, if you're reading this, your life expectancy is not 78 years old. Why? Because you're not a baby. I have a video on this here. You can, again, you can't click to it on the book, but you will be in the Kindle edition. But even this, with this knowledge, people still say things like, what if I die tomorrow? I wouldn't have received anything. Might as well take it now to make sure I get something. Or Social Security's bankrupt. I better get it while I can. Better get it now because they're going to reduce benefits anyway. Pretty soon, no one is getting Social Security. And there's a typo there. Better get it while it's there. I've known people who've died before getting any Social Security. No way that's going to happen to me. I'm not one to chastise you for taking Social Security benefits early if you're doing it based on proper number crunch. There are many reasons to take the benefit early, but please make sure you, if you do take it early, it's for the right reasons based on sound math, right? That's it, man. That's chapter, uh, what's that? Chapter four. So go on to uh, chapter five using some real world scenarios from old Julie, who's a real life client of mine who gave me the permission to use her info. So it'll be fun. So stay tuned. Thanks, now.